डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटीज वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज आई डॉक्टर जैनी शाह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अप यूनिट नंबर सिक्स हैमलेट फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन लिटरेचर एंड साइकोलॉजी दिस यूनिट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर बैचलर ऑफ आर्ट्स इंग्लिश पेपर नंबर वन विच इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू लिटरेचर इन दिस सेशन ऑन हैमलेट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड फोकस ऑन दीज पॉइंट विच आर मैंशन हेयर सो फ्रेंड्स लेट एस बिगिन फ्रेंड्स The tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, is often shortened just to Hamlet. It is a it is a play written between 1599 to 1602. This is one of the famous tragedies written by the poet playwright William Shakespeare, who is regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's greatest dramatist. Shakespeare has written as many as 37 plays. subjects of these plays vary from comedies romances histories to tragedies hamlet friends is the most famous of shakespeare's all the other tragedies such as othello king lear macbeth julius caesar romeo and juliet etc friends when the average length of a play in the elizabethan age was of 3000 lines the play hamlet by shakespeare is the longest play with five acts and 4042 lines it is a tragedy or a tragic play friends tragic is something characterized by extreme sorrow distress disastrous devastating and unfortunate these kinds of plays evoke a feeling of sympathy pity and fear in the audience friends shakespeare derived the story of hamlet from the 13th century chronicle called legend of hamlet which was written by saxo grammaticus the play hamlet is also believed to be inspired from the play called or hamlet friends or is a german prefix which means prior something prior or original or hamlet is a play by an unknown author it is also believed to be written by either thomas kidd or william shakespeare himself for the friends how important has this play been can be understood by the statement uh, that william shakespeare's play hamlet has inspired more critical investigation critique as well as comment from critics and scholars than any other play by any dramatist throughout english literature various interpretations or derivations of meanings from hamlet have been attempted such as hamlet as a revenge play hamlet as a tragedy hamlet as a religious play hamlet as a play within a play and further many more a number of critical approaches or critical theories have been applied to the play hamlet such as structuralism marxism feminism as well as psychological criticism friends apart from literature hamlet is shakespeare's most powerful and influential works with endless retellings and adaptations by others over 50 films 5050 films of shakespeare's hamlet have been made since the year 1900 amongst which kenneth branagh's 1966 film hamlet converted the full version of the text into the movie you might as well know the movies like the lion king which is based on hamlet as well as the famous bollywood movie called heather is also based on this play hamlet friends hamlet has been directly portrayed in various other mediums apart from literature uh, with numerous adaptations of either hamlet's story or hamlet's characters Hamlet has been adopted into stage performances, films, in television shows, in various genres of cartoons, drama, horror, mystery, detective shows, science fiction, as well as in radio. 
uh, and in literature, other various forms apart from drama such as poetry, short story. Hamlet has been adapted even in music for opera and instrumental performances and in art for sculptures and paintings. Having said this, now let us come to the core of the session. Friends, broadly, the subject matter of the play Hamlet is that it is set in Denmark, Europe. It depicts Prince Hamlet and his revenge against his uncle Claudius who has murdered Hamlet's father so that he can seize the throne and marry Hamlet's mother. Friends, apart from the play, the character of Hamlet itself has inspired even more varied, complex and intense reaction among audience, critics, scholars, actors as well as directors. Now let us have a look into the characterization of the major characters of the play. First character is Hamlet. Hamlet is the titular character and the protagonist. He is the prince of Denmark. Hamlet is about 30 years old at the beginning of the play. He is the son of the late King Hamlet and Queen Gertrude and the nephew of King Claudius, the present king. Hamlet is sad, melancholy, bitter and cynical. He is full of hatred for his uncle's betrayal and he is full of disgust for his mother because she has married his uncle. Hamlet is seen as reflective, thoughtful person, but often comes through as hesitant and indecisive person. Next is Claudius. Claudius, friends, is the present king of Denmark. He is the brother of King Hamlet and Hamlet's uncle, and the antagonist as well as the villain of the play. Claudius is shrewd calculating, ambitious person who is driven by his lust for power and his love for Gertrude. Let us now know about Gertrude. Friends, Gertrude is the queen of Denmark. She is Hamlet's mother. After King Hamlet's death, she instantly gets married to Ham King Hamlet's brother, Claudius. Gertrude comes across as a shallow and weak woman without any signs of moral conduct, virtue and righteousness. Next friends is Horatio. Horatio is Hamlet's close friend. He is loyal, faithful and helpful friend to Hamlet throughout the play. Ha Horatio is even ready to die for Hamlet. Eventually, he remains alive to tell Hamlet's story. Then friends, there is Polonius. Polonius is the most senior officer of the royal household, of the royal court and he is the advisor to Claudius. Polonius is the conniving and conspirator old man. He is the father of Laertes and Ophelia. Now friends, we have Ophelia. Ophelia is a beautiful young woman with whom Hamlet has been in love. She is innocent and obedient girl. She is even manipulated by Polonius. Polonius schemes Ophelia to spy on Hamlet. Eventually, she lapses into madness and dies by drowning in the river. Friends, Laertes is Polonius's son and Ophelia's brother and turns into Hamlet's enemy. Then we have Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Friends, these two persons are courtiers and former friends of Hamlet. Then we have Fortinbras. Fortinbras is a prince of Norway whose father was killed by Hamlet's father. So now Fortinbras wishes to attack Denmark and seize the throne. And finally friends, one of the most important characters in the play is the ghost. Yes friends, the ghost. In this play, the spirit or the ghost of Hamlet, a recently dead father appears to Hamlet. The ghost claims to have been murdered by Claudius, calls upon Hamlet to avenge him. Now friends, Having known the major characters, let us know a brief summary of the play Hamlet. Friends, Hamlet is the prince of Denmark. His father, King Hamlet, the king of Denmark, has died before the play begins. Hamlet's uncle, Claudius, has taken over the King Hamlet's throne and he has married Hamlet's mother, Gertrude. At the beginning of the play, a ghost appears to some soldiers. The ghost looks just like Hamlet's father, the dead king Hamlet. 
the soldiers agree to tell this to Hamlet. Meanwhile, Claudius tells Hamlet that he must stop being sad and distressed about his father's death. Hamlet says that he will try and be normal. But when Hamlet is alone, all by himself, he reflects and he says that he is disgusted more that his mother has married Claudius immediately after his father's death. Hamlet's love interest is Ophelia. Her father Polonius and her brother Laertes try to convince her that Hamlet doesn't love her. They convince her that because Hamlet belongs to a royal family, he cannot marry whoever he wants. So he will not marry you. They say that Hamlet is more likely to seduce Ophelia than to marry her. Ophelia following this agrees not to talk to Hamlet anymore. Hamlet sees the ghost who looks just like Hamlet's father. It says that it is Hamlet's father. The ghost also tells Hamlet that Claudius has murdered him by pouring poison in his ears. Hamlet swears to take revenge. Hamlet mentions to his soldiers that in near future it is beneficial to him if he pretends that he has gone mad. Hamlet comes to see Ophelia after she returns the love letters written by Hamlet. He acts to be insane, he is trembling and pale with messed up clothes, he looks scared. Polonius now thinks that maybe Hamlet really did love Ophelia and he has gone mad because Ophelia has rejected him. Meanwhile, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are asked by Claudius and Gertrude to find out the reason that why Hamlet is behaving crazily. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern try to cheer up Hamlet by telling him that a group of actors have arrived at the castle. Hamlet decides that the actors perform a play that mimics the murder of King Hamlet. He wants to see if Claudius reacts to it and shows his guilt and he wants to check the authenticity of Ghost's claim. Claudius's reaction to the play will confirm Hamlet's doubts. Claudius, Gertrude and Polonius want to test Hamlet if he is acting crazy because he is lovesick or there is something else. Hamlet is very fierce towards Ophelia and tells her that she should become a nun. Hearing this, Claudius decides that Hamlet is not in love and it gets confirmed to Claudius that Hamlet is think thinking something different and Hamlet is a threat to Claudius. So Claudius decides to send Hamlet to England. That evening, the actors perform the play that Hamlet requested. When Claudius sees the scene of the play in which the king is murdered by pouring poison in the ears, Claudius becomes so upset that he gets up and leaves the play in between. Through this reaction, it is confirmed to Hamlet that Claudius has indeed murdered King Hamlet. Now when Claudius is alone, he admits his guilt for murdering his brother and he prays for forgiveness. While Claudius is praying, Hamlet comes into the room and decides to kill Claudius, but he stops just then. Hamlet does not kill Claudius because if he kills him while praying, he will go to heaven, whereas Claudius should go to hell. After this scene, Hamlet goes to meet Gertrude in her room, not knowing that Gertrude has given permission to Polonius to hide behind the tapestry, behind the curtain. Hamlet thinks that the person hiding is Claudius and he stabs the person through the curtain, killing Polonius instead of Claudius. Further, Hamlet accuses his mother Gertrude for marrying Claudius. The ghost also enters the room and scolds Hamlet for taking so long to take revenge. After that, Hamlet manages to escape from England and from the trap of the death sentence issued by Claudius. Whereas Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are hanged to death instead of Hamlet. Meanwhile, Ophelia loses her mind following her father's death, Polonius's death. Ophelia drowns in a stream and it is during burying Ophelia's body that Hamlet's come to know of her death. He cries and claims his true love for Ophelia. 
Laertes holds Hamlet responsible for Polonius and Ophelias' death. Eventually, a duel or a fight is arranged between Laertes and Hamlet, where Laertes poisons the sword and Claud Claudius poisons the glass of wine. Hamlet gets the first hit and as a reward, Claudius offers him a glass of wine. Hamlet refuses the, the poisonous glass of wine, saying that he is not ready to drink yet. Hamlet gets the second hit. Now, to celebrate, Gertrude picks up the glass and drinks the wine before Claudius could, st could stop her. Laertes finally gets to hit Hamlet and wounds him with a poisonous sword. In this scuffle, the swords get exchanged and finally Hamlet stabs Laertes with a poisoned sword. Gertrude collapses, saying that she has been poisoned. She dies. Laertes confesses to Hamlet that he poisoned the sword so that they both will die now. Laertes blames Claudius for the scheme. Laertes dies, saying he is sorry for what he has done. Hamlet stabs Claudius with a poisoned sword and forces him to drink the poisoned wine. Claudius also dies. Hamlet tells Horatio to remain behind and tell the truth about everything that has happened and Hamlet dies eventually. Friends here, Fortinbras, Prince of Norway. Remember Fortinbras' father, King Fortinbras, was killed by King Hamlet. So the story comes to a full circle when Prince Fortinbras arrives with his army to visit Claudius. When Prince Fortinbras sees that the whole royal family of Denmark is dead, he claims the kingdom for himself. So friends, this is the tragedy by Shakespeare where the protagonist Hamlet dies because of the tragic flaw of procrastination which is called delay in avenging his father's death. Now let us come to the interpretation of the play. Friends, Hamlet is a tragedy and tragedies by Shakespeare are mainly about a tragic hero and a tragic flaw that leads to the death of hero in most cases. This play is much about the inner workings of the minds of the characters as well. Let us understand and interpret this play Hamlet from the psychological point of view. First, let us analyze the character of Ghost. Ghost is the manifestation of the inner mind. The ghost is a frequently occurring character in Shakespeare's tragedies. The ghost is, uh, is performing an important function in his tragedies. The ghost appears in the plays such as Macbeth, Julius Caesar, Richard III, Cymbeline and Hamlet. In Hamlet, the ghost gives voice to the Hamlet's doubts about his mother's haste in marrying Claudius immediately after the King Hamlet's death. Shakespeare incorporates the ghost of King Hamlet who takes a form, he becomes visible to Hamlet and he reveals that he has been killed by Claudius and that his death must be avenged. The ghost, however, advises Hamlet not to plan any sort of revenge against his mother, which many critics see as it as a manifestation of Hamlet's inability to harm his own mother. So friends, this was the psychological viewpoint of the character of ghost. Now friends, another aspect of psychology in the play Hamlet is that of soliloquies. A soliloquy is an act, especially in a play, where a character speaks his or her thoughts aloud by himself and without any other characters hearing it. Soliloquies focus on how a character progresses in a line of thinking. It focuses on the thinking process of the character so it helps the readers to enter the mind of the character in order to understand the actions of the character. Soliloquy in Hamlet by Prince Hamlet begins this way. The very famous to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Friends, these lines clearly show the confusion, the dilemma of Hamlet regarding what to do, whether to suffer the betrayal of Claudius silently 
or to avenge his father's death by killing his uncle and landing himself into a sea of troubles. Hamlet is depressed by his father's death and his mother's remarriage. This conflict and disgust within himself is spread throughout the entire tragedy. This clearly shows us the psychological state of mind of Hamlet and his tragic flaw of procrastinating or delaying indecisiveness in his father's avenge. Hamlet even pretends to be mad in order to achieve his purpose of disclosing Claudius's tyranny. On the other hand, Ophelia also has a soliloquy in a play. When she becomes insane, in her soliloquy, she reveals her feeling of being cheated under the pretense of love. She becomes mentally instable to the extent that she takes her own life, she claims her own life. Through soliloquies, Shakespeare shows us the internal worlds of his characters. This is the psychological point of view. Further friends, use of psychology is also evident when Shakespeare incorporates a play within a play. That is, Hamlet is a play and in this play, another small play depicting the king's murder is performed by the actors on request of Hamlet to catch the guilty conscience of Claudius by mapping his reaction, which would also establish the truth and the authenticity of the coast. Friends, now let us come to the crucial psychological interpretation of the play Hamlet, which is called Oedipus Complex. In the earlier session, psychological and psychoanalytic literary criticism have been discussed. So based on that concept, we shall move further. Friends, Sigmund Freud's thoughts regarding Hamlet were first published in his book called The Interpretation of Dreams. In his theory, he drew parallels from Sophocles' tragedy, Oedipus Rex. Freud designed a psychological theory of Oedipus complex and applied it to the play Hamlet and specifically to the character of Hamlet. Friends, a whole new approach to literature began with the theory of Freud, which showcased that literature is entwined with psyche. It is interrelated with the mind of the person. According to Freud, more than the conscious mind, the person's unconscious mind plays a large part in how the person thinks, feels and behaves in a particular situation. Oedipus complex is a term used by Freud to describe a child's feeling of desire for his or her opposite sex parent and jealousy and anger toward his or her same sex parent. Oedipus complex means the complex emotions aroused in a young child by an unconscious sexual desire for the parent of the opposite sex and wish to exclude the parent of the same sex. So basically Oedipus complex is the male child's interest and involvement for his mother and a sense of rivalry, rivalry or anger for his father. Whereas the term Electra complex applies to girls, which is a female child's interest and involvement for her father and a sense of rivalry and anger for her mother. Friends, Hamlet possesses Oedipus complex for Claudius, who is not his father, but has now taken the place of his father by taking the throne and marrying his mother. He is extremely disgusted with her mother marrying Claudius, with his mother marrying Claudius. When Hamlet confronts Gertrude, he crosses all the bound, bounds of decency in a mother-son relationship and asks Gertrude to be away from Claudius. But friends, at the same time, Hamlet is unable to kill Claudius because by taking his father's place, Claudius has led Hamlet to realize the repressed, suppressed or hidden desires of Hamlet's childhood for his mother. Friends, a critique called Ernest Jones has extensively provided the psychological answers to the complex behavior of Hamlet as portrayed by Shakespeare in his book Hamlet and Oedipus published in 1949. So friends, 
Moving further, here are some of the questions. Kindly attempt to write the answers to it, which may help you in understanding the topic better. Here are some of the resources for the further reading of the topic. Friends, I hope that this has been a helpful session for you. Uh, and thank you for watching the video friends and goodbye until next time.